Imagine the Elder Scrolls Oblivion on a smaller scale with a semi-open world and replace all the races with anthropomorphic animals and remove the combat and levelling. That's pretty much East Shade, on the surface at least. The Elder Scrolls influence is pretty apparent. It comes across in the visual style, the music, the focus on exploration and in the conversation system. No combat though, which might worry you and set those walking sim alarm bells ringing. Because what is an Elder Scrolls game without combat, I ask you? What is the core gameplay loop that's going to keep me playing? This is where I'd argue that the combat in Elder Scrolls games has always been pretty average in my opinion. It's a means to an end, inserted simply because RPGs are meant to have combat. The draw for me in Bethesda's games has always been the exploration, that urge to ignore the main quest and wander off into the wilderness to find my own adventure. Just exploring by itself though isn't enough if there's no purpose to it or if there's nothing to discover, be it visual or scripted storytelling, a gameplay loop which is usually combat in most RPGs, or a reward of some kind. But what is the purpose of exploring an East Shade, you might ask? Well, predominantly, and rather nicely, it's tied to the rather simple plot. You play as a painter who is travelling to East Shade to capture some of your mother's favourite locations onto canvas. This was her dying wish, and I think it ties into the devs' previous game that was a more straightforward walking sim. Tying the main quest and painting mechanic to the exploration is a pretty great idea, especially in a game that doesn't have any combat to distract you. It helps that the environments are really lovely, with huge varieties of flora and interesting architecture to look at. It's like a prettier oblivion, so there's always the urge to explore just to see the sights. With the relaxing music and sounds of nature in the air, just walking through the landscape soaking up the sights can be an experience in and of itself, even more so than in oblivion I'd say partly because you're not constantly interrupted by bandits or wolves. For someone with an interest in virtual photography, like me, this is a very appealing title as there are a great many opportunities to take fantastic screenshots, helped along by the limited HUD. It's also great seeing the section of screen you've chosen to capture appear as a painting, and any you give to the NPCs as part of a quest will appear in their various abodes. Now this might still sound boring to you, but luckily you aren't just walking through a forest painting one scene after the next. There are many NPCs with quests, there's small towns to explore and resources to gather. So far during my about 4 hours of play, I haven't been frustrated or bored, even though a number of the quests are of the fetch variety. Resources are easy to gather, instructions for locations to paint are well explained, and you'll often run into another quest goal on the way or perhaps unlock some secret crafting recipe, or, you know, stumble across a bored musician, which I did at one point, so the gameplay feels very organic. The discovery aspect of the game's exploration is really relying on the storytelling then, which here comes from the NPCs and the odd book or letter. If the writing was weak, I don't think I'd remain engaged enough to carry on, even with the visual surprises. Luckily, the writing is good, with a number of interesting and endearing characters with short but well-written quests for you to engage with. There's no great depth to any of them, but I wouldn't expect that from a small indie title with numerous NPCs to write for, just as long as enough of them stand out. They're certainly more memorable than most of the NPCs in Oblivion. I understand. Quite reasonable. Let us begin learning about one another. Is your favourite colour orange or yellow? Hmm, I see. Now, now, if you had to choose between eating slugs or cakes, which would you eat? No. Why would you ask that? This next one will be tricky. If you saw a frog, Stranded all alone on a lily pad. What would you do? I wouldn't have expected that kind of dedication from you. I feel as if I have come to know you very well. Would you agree that we can be friends now? 
The voice acting is a mixed bag though, while it's mostly okay and occasionally even professional sounding, there are some NPCs that appear to have been voiced by an intern, or maybe someone who wandered in off the street and recorded their audio with their own microphone. There are also several NPCs with strong American accents, either New York or Boston I'd guess, and these always seem out of place to me in fantasy games, especially when mixed with typical British or European accents. Conversations in the game are supposedly dynamic and incorporate unlockable topics, so discovering new areas or sites, or even hearing another character talk about a certain thing, will add that topic to your dialogue options when speaking to other NPCs. Uh, this works in a similar way to Oblivion, in which you could chat to NPCs about different cities or locations you'd heard about, at least I recall you could do something along those lines, and played that game in forever. I think it works better in Eshade though because you can only talk to certain important NPCs and some of them won't discuss certain topics or discuss any topics at all. Uh, this means you won't get the same repeated dialogue that you did talking to randoms in Oblivion and so it's a much more useful feature. As I think in Oblivion you could just talk to anyone, couldn't you? Useful or not. NPCs also react to you differently if you're carrying a painting they might want, at least if you've unlocked the quest to get said painting. Towards the start of the game, I got a quest to paint the Eclipse, which I'd already done by chance just to try out the painting mechanic. There are other dialogue options during conversation which seem incidental and more for role-playing reasons, but others that appear to be just to accept or reject what are clearly quests. Having said that, I haven't done much in the way of experimenting, as this is an impressions, and I tend to go for the option that will likely move the quest forward. Although if you're so inclined, as I am, to crush the dreams of children, you can be impolite about a child's artwork while still completing the kid's quest. I briefly messed about in the starting area again to see if I could change anything, and on my second attempt I managed to persuade a little boy who thought he could fly onto the roof. When he told everyone to turn or he'd jump, I did eventually turn around, so I have no idea if he'd have jumped or not if I hadn't turned around. The game seems a little too wholesome for that. Although, another quest involving the kid's dad seemed to touch on domestic abuse. There appeared to be multiple options here, but not enough depth to the quest for me to make up my mind, so I just told the accuser to report it. I did still confront the guy with the accusation, and refused to leave his house, which resulted in a punch in the face, and the little boy leaving with his aunt. Perhaps there are other outcomes, but no long-term consequences or effect on the overall plot. Easy does it. Do you know your name? Okay, just have to check. Standard protocol when someone gets hit in the head like that. And do you remember what happened? Now despite my general positivity, there are some issues I have besides the patchy voice acting. The game's performance is pretty lousy, despite numerous patches to address that. I get a fair bit of slowdown on my potato, but have seen similar reports from others with more impressive rigs. There is also a great deal of pop-in and the level of detail on distant objects is pretty poor. The scenery from a distance is very blurry, but again, that could be a stylistic choice I guess because sometimes it looks quite painterly. I've also encountered numerous bugs, my favourite being a frozen flock of seagulls and some cloned NPC bears layered on top of each other. Nothing game-breaking so far though. You made it to Nava! You still have the pastries, right? Oh, this is gonna be great! Okay, my brother's sitting at the table right outside the bakery. I'll go over to him first, then you follow behind. Remember, make him think you're a normal delivery person. Oh, hello there, delivery person. I'm not expecting any packages. there, delivery person. I'm not expecting any packages. Can I help you? As well as the bugs, some of the environmental objects are nothing more than sprites, and some of the textures are quite ugly on closer inspection. NPC animations are also fairly limited, with some of the larger areas full of basically static, silent NPCs. These non-quest givers should make the world feel more alive, but sometimes they do the opposite. There's no, what did he call it, Todd? No key rebindings, which, as you may know, is one of my bugbears. Uh, it basically means I have to play with the controller in this instance, and my controller was bugging out a little here. Uh, it felt floaty and laggy, 
and when I turn the analog stick to the left, if I held it for too long, I would essentially have lag, so I would keep rotating to the left. I don't know if that's my controller or the game, though, so... I also felt that they could have done more with the painting mechanic in terms of player involvement. As I said, it is nice to be able to focus on a specific area of the screen and then see it recreated, essentially. But all you're doing is choosing the location and borders and then pressing A. You're not actually painting anything. A place to show off your paintings and perhaps share with other players could be nice too. Maybe even a custom achievement if such things were possible. There's about 10 hours of content here, which is more than enough for me to recommend this to people interested in an artistic, explorative experience like this. It really is lovely at the times, and I hope it serves well enough for them to think about a sequel, where they could expand on the painting mechanic and make the crafting more useful. I think the developers have managed to show that you don't necessarily need combat in an exploration game to make it engaging. And with that, I'll see you next time. Hello. I'm not really in the mood to talk with anyone. I lost something really important. It was like the key to everything.